Hi! Just finished my lunch and it's my break time so I decided to make this video and share what I know about Taiwan cram schools and for you to know more about cram school culture here in Taiwan and where they are placed in Taiwan's education system. Aside from the formal education offered by the local school system, that's the public and the private schools, and international schools, Taiwan enacted into law the Supplementary Education Act. The main purpose of that is to uh, supplement the general knowledge and to raise the nation's level of education. So there are three types of supplementary education. First is the Supplementary Compulsory Act, uh, sorry, Supplementary Compulsory Education. Second is the Supplementary Advanced Education. And the third one is the Short-Term Tutorial Education. The first one, which is the Supplementary ed Compulsory Education, para to sa mga Taiwanese citizens past the school age, but haven't received the nine years compulsory education yet. Kasi dito meron silang nine years compulsory education law. So this education is affiliated with elementary and junior high. The second one is the Supplementary Advanced Education and this is for citizens who want to advance their knowledge um, on certain areas and this, is, this education is affiliated with senior high and universities or colleges. And the third one is the Short-Term Tutorial Education and this is for citizens who wanted to or who wants to acquire general knowledge um, or skills in a particular area. This may be provided by schools, government, foundation, organization, or even private um, individuals or you know, businesses. There are two categories of short-term tutorial education. One is academic and the other one is the non-academic short-term tutorial education. So cram school or locally known as Bushiban belongs to the third supplementary education which is known as the short-term supplementary education but ang cram school no word kasi it becomes like a collective term that we use for all the supplementary education among the foreigners kala kasi nila pag short term it's all about language learning well Bushiban or cram school is more than language learning. There are actually different categories of short-term tutorial education. Meron, as I've mentioned before, meron siyang academic, meron siyang non-academic. So we know about the foreign languages, but actually foreign languages fewer lang fewer siya uh, compared with other academic subjects. Like for example, there's only three thousand four hundred Bushiban or cram schools teaching foreign languages and I think most of that is English if not all well while science and literature Bushiban I think there are around 12,000 of that across the country you've been here for a little bit or for quite a long time you'll notice this cram school culture and uh, you will also notice how education obsessed Taiwan is in fact Taiwan is among the countries with the longest instructional formal instruction per year. Uh, their school days is also quite long. In the Philippines, if I am not mistaken, we only have 209 school days. Dito sa Taiwan, at least 220 ang school days dito. Taiwan in general, they belong to the top 5 countries na yung mga parents ay talagang nag invest sa education ng kanilang mga anak. So it is not surprising that any businesses related to education ay very lucrative dito sa Taiwan. At isa na dyan yung mga cram schools. So there's so many cram schools here. There are different kinds of, of cram schools, different sizes. Meron mga cram schools na isa lang yung school. There are also cram schools na may branches all over the country. Like yung Hess, yung mga Kojen, Shane, Giraffe English, Kid Castle. Sila yung mga malalaki na every district talaga meron silang branch. So bakit nga ba maraming cram schools dito sa Taiwan? I think the spread of cram schools over 30 years is mainly due to the ever-increasing need to do well in exams. 
Dito kasi literal na exam is life eh. Chess is life. Every milestone, um, educational milestone, meron sila mga admission test. Like from junior to high school, they have to take admission test. Senior to university admission test. University to career, it's admission test. So, sometimes yung mga, yung isang isang score ng, ng test nila, it will determine their whole life. One example is the senior high um, scores. They have what you call this general scholastic test. There are universities here that will only admit students with a particular school, with a particular score, usually yung mga highest score na. So like for example, pangarap mong maging doktor, di ba? So you want to be in a very good school, but that school only will admit students with specific scores. So even if you've studied for like four years, sa isang araw lang ng test taking, and your score will determine whether you will be able to reach that dream or not. So, marami ditong na-pressure. So, ganyan yung kultura dito. Like, literally, exam is life. Of course, if that's the culture, it's not surprising na formal education would not be enough. That's why we have the cram school. They have this cram school. Because cram school will train the students to pass the exam. May mga cram school kasi dito na they have the first-hand information about the test and they've got questions from previous tests so they train the students to pass the test yun nga yung um to the point na parang association na lang yung ginagawa ng mga estudyante without even understanding the content of what they're studying um it's usually multiple choice so it's about test taking strategies compared to really understanding uh the content of the subjects that is um in the test Yung testing mentality na yan, or testing culture na yan, hanggang ngayon, ganyan pa rin. Although, uh, there are advocates na from the student's body, from the student's side, calling government or calling government officials to think about changing the regulations. But you know what? Bushipan became more than just testing centers. They are, they become the places, safe places to go after school, lalo na kasi yung majority ng mga parents dito are in the workforce. They're very busy, so hindi nila maasikaso yung mga anak nila like picking them up after school. They sent their kids to Pushipan because what better way to spend their time while waiting for their parents. Diba? Of course, obviously, but sa Taiwan, um, it's gonna be study. Not all parents agree with this testing culture. In fact, um, there's an increasing number of parents voicing out their concerns. So more and more parents were sending their kids to study in different countries, to go to the US or UK to study in a more holistic educational system. It also opened a way for private schools to establish an international education doon nagsimula kung bakit uh, dumami na rin yung international department or bilingual schools offering international department to prepare for life abroad or to cope with the lessons in the international schools the parents or the students need to know the language english language so the, there's a need, there was a demand, and cram schools saw this one. They started hiring native foreign teachers to teach the English language to students. Ano nangyari na may maraming uh, foreign teachers hired to teach kindergarten? Actually kasi, so parang conflict of ideas between parents and then the um, education system here because the education here in in Taiwan students should learn their mother tongue and uh, mother tongue at an early age and then later on just learn other foreign languages but then the parents believe that in order for their kids to cope with uh, life outside Taiwan or the international school they need to learn how to speak English in an earlier age it's by law that students under the age of six years old learn mandarin or learn the mother tongue only so they cannot or um, any institution any educational institution cannot offer english as a subject in their school unless it's integrated with other chinese subjects parang ano lang siya parang um, mini lessons lang siya you cannot or 
the schools or in centers, um, this is for kindergarten or edu uh, educare centers, cannot offer a, a half day English classes or a full day English classes. It's illegal and that's the law. Kaso nga lang, there is a demand, there's a, there was a huge demand of English language for little children. Kaya parang um, cram schools took the risk of, of um, offering these classes because they can actually find loopholes in the regulations among supplementary education. Nagsasabi na, if it's kindergarten, it's in a gray area. But then if you're just going to, to, to look at it black and white, basta yung bata, six years below, hindi siya pwedeng turuan ng English because they still need to learn their mother tongue. So, yun yung ano dyan, yung, yung mga practices ng cram schools or bushiban na hindi sinasabi sa mga foreigners. If there were some cases na may mga inspections coming from immigrations or MOE and they found out that there were foreigners teaching kindergarten, there were some before uh, deported, they give penalties or fines sa, sa mga kindergarten. So if you look at the situation, ang, ang worst penalty is nasa teacher, hindi yung sa center because the center will just get fined or penalized. Pero yung foreign teachers, the big possibility na pwede ka talagang ma-deport. And another thing about kindergarten pushipan uh, or cram school, the only teachers who could teach there are those that were qualified to teach preschool. And for Taiwan, they have specific requirements for that. They have specific in-service training for teachers, uh, preschool teachers. So if you're going to be technical on all of these requirements in the teacher qualification. Uh, this different in-service workshops or training for teachers happens only here in Taiwan. If you are a qualified preschool teacher uh, from other country, you have to go to MOE um, and then let them assess your credentials. And I think what happened is that the MOE will forward that to a university or I think you will be the one to go to the university, let them assess your credentials. And if they approve that, then that's when the central government or the MOE will give you permission to um, to to teach as long as you do your in-service training in Taiwan so that's a very complicated process when I look through that um, um, I inferred that only Taiwanese teachers who are qualified to teach preschool can actually be to teach kindergarten here in Taiwan so marami siyang mga malpractices in kindergarten kaya we have you have to be careful make sure that you know what you're getting into let's talk about the hiring process so first off cram school teachers are not under the ministry of education cram school teachers are under the ministry of labor so the hiring process is uh, in taiwan is like this as an applicant, if you want, if you wish to work here, you really need to look for your school first, whether it's a cram school or a private or a public school. You need to find and apply to schools first, and then schools will offer you a contract. Then that is when you will submit the documentation to them, and the school will apply for your work permit, work permit granted by either MOL. Minister of Labor of Labor or Minister of Education, give it to school. The school will give it to you, and then when you have that uh, working permit, then you can apply to Teco in the Philippines uh, for a resident visa before you could come here to Taiwan. That's how it is done here, regardless of whether you are under Ministry of Labor and under Ministry of Education. Now, during this pandemic, though. Ang Ministry of Labor wala siyang special permit for those who were hired by cram schools so could not enter Taiwan kasi wala siyang clearance from the um, Epidemic Control Center. Whereas yung under MOE, they have special entry permit. If you're under MOE, which means that you'll be teaching in public schools or private schools, then your work permit when you apply to um, to TECO for your resident visa, meron na kayong special permit and you can come in anytime here. That's only for this year, that's because of the pandemic. But I think after the Chinese New Year, they will lift it up. I've uh, read from the news now. 
well this is not still final but hopefully Taiwan will lift its ban or border for so that Filipino migrants can come um, that also includes teachers for cram schools what are the requirements for working permit usually it's authenticated um, documents or, or your credentials your degree you have to make it you have to to go to the dfa for authentic uh, authentication i think that's what you call that apostille and then your nbi ano ba ba? yung credentials passport I, I think they have the list they will give you the list anyway if you are accepted by the cram school and then that's when you are going to process and you're going they will uh, apply for the work permit so how about the working hours working hours is also different because sa cram schools again let me remind you that cram schools are privately owned they are run as business yung income jan depends sa number of enrollment diba? sometimes sa mga full-time na cram school teachers you will be given like an, a fixed time the regulation or in the law not less than 14 hours and not more than 32 hours yan yung ano yan yung allotted na teaching time for cram school teachers not less than 14 but not exceeding 32 okay so alam ko maraming mga cram school teachers na ang daming mga part-time um, jobs but that's you can also teach um sa two different cram schools but you also need to have two different working permit. So, maraming, maraming mga, maraming mga cram school teachers ang not really following the technicalities of that because, you know, if you are teaching part-time, marami ka pwedeng apply yan. Like, for example, four hours dito, four hours dyan. Depende na lang talaga kung makakaya ng katawan mo. But be aware kung ano yung mga legalities, ano yung mga limitations and yung mga stipulations na dapat mong malaman so you will not caught red-handed diba okay so that's uh how about the holidays or how about the paid leave oh, medyo, na ano ko so for the paid leave again because this is uh, the cram schools are under um mol so you have to follow the labor laws and i think the stipulation you are entitled to up to more than fifty two three to 15 days but it depends on how many years you've stayed in a company if you've stayed in a company for more than five years i think then you're entitled to 10 to 5 to 15 days leave if you are under a year up to one year i think you just uh entitled to three or seven days and more than one year but less than two years you're entitled to seven days and if you're you've stayed in the in the, in that company for more than two years but less than three years then it's 10 days so it's very different public schools are also quite similar very limited then yung kanilang um paid annual leave which is not like sa private schools malaki yung flexibility dyan in terms of paid leave uh, especially if you're a senior in in that school marami kang mas marami kang uh, paid leave i think more than 15 or 20 depende sa number of years mo so ganyan and besides a lot of of cram schools will pay you in an hourly rate so you're not teaching by hour o kung wala kang turo in um, specified time of course wala ka rin income so it's your choice do you wanna do you wanna take a break or do you wanna have a um, a vacation for more than 15 days or more than 10 days that means you don't have any pay so ganyan lang yan about the salary so yung standard early rate dito is 600 to 650 although wala siya, wala siya sa law na ganyan talaga yung hourly rate but that's the kumbaga yung agreed standard uh, yung norm ng mga foreigners dito but according to the law the minimum at least is 47,971 NTT that's the minimum that a foreign uh, professional can get and that is across the board is uh, including the cram schools the, uh, the cram school teachers and that is different if you're teaching under MOE kasi sa MOE meron silang standardized uh, salary bracket and like for public schools the the mo the minimum is 62 
or almost 63,000 NTD. So, malaki yung difference. But for, if you're in a cram school and if you're teaching by hour, and let's say if you have minimum of 25 teaching hours per week, so more or less, if you have 25 to 30 uh, teaching hours per week, more or less nasa 65 to 80-ish thousand NTD rin. So, medyo malaki na rin. So, if you have a fixed time, let's say, yun niya, example is 25 to 30 hours per week, okay, yan, uh, that would give you uh, a lot of money that your salary would be around 65,000 to 80,000 NTD. But, if you don't have enough enrollees or if you don't have enough students within your classroom, then I don't think you will be able to get that you know the amount or the teaching time that you want in order for you to to cope with your monthly um, target in sa sa mga mga cons or disadvantage in teaching cram schools especially if it's not the big the bigger cram schools so maliit lang yung cram school let's say one or two schools lang unstable yung number of students and that will affect your income yeah, those are the things that you have to consider if you are teaching in a cram school, which means that you also need to save up. For example, like kagaya nito, pandemic, some of the cram schools, wala na silang students, so wala na rin work yung mga cram school teachers. Disadvantage if you're teaching in a cram school, uh, which you will not experience if you're teaching in a private or public school. So I guess that's it. I hope you've learned something. I hope there are things na na clarify sa mga sinabi ko about cram schools, about um, mga legal issues and mga stipulations surrounding the supplementary education. I hope you've learned a lot. If you have any questions, please comment below or send me a message perhaps. Yeah, if uh, what else? Next time naman yung iba, I, I, I don't know what else can I share with you, but I'm hoping I can create more videos, more of informational videos. Anyway, that's my time. That's my cue. It's almost, super, uh, it's my supervision. So yeah, bye, 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 bye.